Left, host of Matthew Left Train Guide Segment Show. Also today in this segment, I'm at the Travel Town Museum in Los Angeles, California. The Travel Town Museum was founded back in December 14, 1952. Also, Travel Town is located in Griffith Park in Los Angeles, California. Also, Travel Town is located on Zoo Drive in Griffith, Griffith Park near the 134 freeway and 12 miles north of downtown Los Angeles. Also, the entry to the museum is free and open every day except on Christmas and other major holidays. The museum is <clears throat> also open weekdays, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and open weekends, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Also, you can ride the train at the museum, a smaller kind of train, around the museum, and there is an admission, admission fee to ride the train and has many different kinds of many trains but not really has many different kinds of trains you'll see in the museum also travel town started with one steam locomotive built by alco in schenectady new york in 1904 travel town has lots of trains to explore and see and also next door to travel town it's got the los angeles live steamers and also miniature trains they have next door and also just east in griffith park there's also another railroad called the griffith park and southern railroad which is just not too far east in griffith park Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 664 was built by Baldwin in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1899 and is the 17,187 steam locomotive built by that factory and is a 664 class steam locomotive. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 664 was originally numbered as 891, then renumbered as 664. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 664 was an oil burner steam locomotive and was used exclusively for freight trains in Texas, Oklahoma, and surrounding states. Although many of this class were operating on freight lines in California, this particular locomotive's record tells of service on Santa Fe's northern southern panhandle plains and gulf divisions. The engine's appearance changed a very little during its 55-year career and the locomotive was in active service when the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe donated the loco to Travel Town. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 664 was used exclusively on freight trains. The engineers, firebox, attend attendants, conductors, and various other personal 
personnel on board had to eat during their long hauls across the Santa Fe system. 664 was retired and then put on display at Travel Town in Los Angeles, California. Also, Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 664 is one of 13 surviving Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 280s today. And you can find 664 here at Travel Town in Los Angeles, California. The Charlie Atkins locomotive was built by Electro Motor Corps in 1941 <clears throat> and is an Electro Motor Division type diesel locomotive. In memory of Travel Town's founder, the first display locomotive at the museum to move under its own pow motive power since 1961. The Charlie Atkins locomotive is numbered one and to move under its own. The one spent most of its working life as an industrial switcher. Built in 1942, the United States Navy Charlie was one of only 11 Model 40 diesels ever built by Electromotive Corporation, a division of General Motors based in La Gang Gange, Illinois. This 300 horsepower prototype locomotive was designed for switching freight cars from track to track in rail yards or hauling heavy loads around the in industrial field represents an early, early ex ex experimentation in diesel design just as Steam locomotive manufacturers had tried to so many different sizes, wheel arrangements, and weight. The design of the locomo this locomotive is unusual because it two model 6-71 diesel engines power a DC traction generator supplying power to a pair of four-wheeled Trucks. Most switching locomotives of this size would be equipped with two traction motors, one of each wheel set in his early days. In his early days, Charlie worked for the Navy hauling coal and supplies at the torpedo station on Goat Island, Rhode Island. Later, Charlie served at the Naval Air Station, North Island, San Diego. After a long career with the Navy, it was transferred in 1962 to the McDonnell Douglas Aircraft Corporation for use at the Naval Weapons Industrial Reserve Plant and worked for more than 25 years at the McDonnell Douglas plant right here in right in Torres, California. On March 11, 1988, the Los Angeles City Board of Recreation and Parks commissioners accepted the McDonnell Douglas donation of Travel Town 1. Charlie Atkins locomotive was then donated to Travel Town in 1988 by the McDonnell Douglas Corporation and can be seen sometimes operating at Travel Town in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, where it is today. California Western 56 was built by Baldwin Lima Hamilton, nearby Eddystone, Pennsylvania, in 1955. Also, California Western 56 is an RS-12 type diesel locomotive. California Western 56 was used for the McLeod River Railroad in Northern California and was originally numbered 32 and 33. The locomotives were designed for multiple unit operations 
and equipment equipped with dynamic braking equipment to assist train hauling handling on the this mo mountainous logging railroad in 1969. Both locomotives were sold to the Chrome Crankshaft Company and sub subsequently resold in September 1970 to the California Western Railroad in Fort Bragg, California. On the California coast and renumbering 55 and 56, both saw passenger and freight service on the California Western Railroad. In time, California Western 55 became inoperable and was cannibalized for parts to keep 56 running. By 1992, California Western had been re relegated, relegated, relegated to yard switching service. California Western Railroad 56, along with many spare parts, came to the Travel Town Collection for preservation and operation in Travel Town's own proposed railroad throughout Griffith Park to the Los Angeles Zoo, known as the Crystal Springs and Kahunaga Valley Railroad. Also, you can find California Western 56 at Travel Town in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, where it is today. United States Navy 1887 was built by American Hoist and Derrick Company in St. Paul, Minnesota in 1943. United States Army 1887 was de designated Crystal Springs in Cahugna Valley Railroad in Railroad 1887. <clears throat> this crane represents an important theme of railroad history and technology getting the job done when major sections of tracks needed to be rebuilt or other trains derailed. United States Army 1887 serves as both an interpretive artifact and an operating tool. Among several jobs already planned for this crane, United States Army Navy number 1887 was donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California in 1999 by the Boeing Corp and can be found at the museum today. Richfield Oil Company 670 was built in 1911. Tank cars are com a common sight on today's railroads and are constructed to carry a variety of liquid com com commodities, com commodities, commodities, commodities. The railroad really supply special use cars like tank cars to freight customers. Unlike boxcars, tankers such as Richfield Oil Company 670 could only carry one specific kind of commodity from a specific company. Also, it is extremely difficult to thoroughly clean out any kind any side residue left within a tank car. Privately owned tank cars which were the first type of freight cars built for and owned by manufacturers or other shipper <clears throat> and just pulled from place to place by the railroad for free for a fee. The X design designation 
still seen today on freight cars. Numbers mean that it is a car owned by a company other than the railroad. The ROX on this car, for example, means it was the property of Richfield Oil. Regardless of the railroad on which it may might have been running, Richfield Oil Company 670 was then retired, then donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California, 1961, by Richfield Oil Company, and can be seen on display. The music. Union Pacific 4439 was built by Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1918 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and is the 48,273rd steam locomotive built by that factory and is an 0606 wheeler type with steam locomotive. 44, Union Pacific 4439 was used as a yard goat in Cheyenne, Wyoming. It was like used as a freight locomotive on the Union Pacific. And then Union Pacific 4439 served on the Los Angeles Harbor Belt Line. <coughs> until her operation ended at the order of the Air Pollution Control Board in 1957. Union Pacific 4439 was the last steam, en steam locomotive to have operated in both the harbor and the greater Los Angeles areas. Then in 1957, Union Pacific 4439 was donated to the Travel Town Museum in Los Angeles, California. Also, Union Pacific 4439 is one of six surviving Union Pacific 060s left in the world today. And can be found at, on display here at Travel Town. And if you're ever seeing Union Pacific 4439, you can also check out the cab and even sit where the engineer and fireman used to sit. Oahu Railway and Land Number 1 was built by Circa around the 1900s. Also, Oahu Railway and Land Number no. One was built for the Hawaiian Railroads and built as a narrow gauge caboose. After World War II, business and travelers traveler dependence on railroads in Hawaii as on the mainland United States weren't one in favor of trucks, automobiles, and airplanes in 1947. The Oahu Railway obtained permission to abandon all lines except those immediately around the Pearl Har Harbor area. <clears throat> in 1950, many of those lines went also sold to the U.S. Navy for a dollar by 1961. The remaining trackage of the Oahu Railway was removed for scrap. The railroad had been the spark for agricultural industry of incredible wealth in Hawaii. It also was a scenic wonder, was also a scenic wonder, sometimes passing within two feet of the ocean surf, chugging along the coast of Oahu, affording its riders one of the world's spectacular sites for a round trip, fee of a dollar ninety. All the equipment from Hawaii Railroad, Hawaiian Railroads at Travel Town, was donated throughout the efforts of the local chapter of the Hawaii Railway and Locomotive Historical Society, who made the initial contacts in Hawaii. In 1953, in 1953, the long, the long ocean voyage across the Pacific did not turn out to be the 
final journey for some of the Hawaiian equipment. Beginning in 1955, the Oahu Railway and Land Company Rel Locomotive 85 pulled Combination Car 36 and Coach Number 1. On excursion rides right here at Travel Town, the track paralleled the route along which the Ventura Freeway would be constructed 10 years later called the Crystal Springs and Southwestern Railway. It cost 20 cents for adults, 10 cents for children, and ceased operation in 1961. Also, Oahu, Oahu Railway Land and Land Number no. 1 was then retired and then donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California in 1953 by the Oahu Railway Inland Company and can be found on display at, at the museum today. Oahu Railway and Land Number 36 was built by the Oahu Railway and Land Company shops in Hawaii in 1910. Oahu Railway and Land Number 36 is a combination car that is a car which carried passengers in one section of baggage, mail, or both in another was commonly used on branch lines of railroads by literally combining two or more functions into one car. A railroad could not could reduce the number of cars needed on short branch lines. This helped cut down on fuel costs as well as on the number of cars the railroad needed to maintain service. Combination cars were usually on the head, on, head end of a train with the baggage and mail section towards the locomotive tender. This prevented the possible security problem of the people passing through the baggage or mail area to reach the seating area. Generally, the seating in a combination car was considered sec second class and was not ni as nicely furnished as regular coach on the same train because of this the combination car was often used as smoking sections and thus became nearly exclusive domain of men since women really smoked in public during the pre-World War II periods in which this car saw service in the railroad also had to comply with Jim Crow laws in certain states and had created separate but not altogether equal accommodance for people of color traveling their roads while in those states. Combination cars of many lines were known to serve those passengers not allowed to travel in the main cars. Rules of segregation were also implement against those of lower socio-economic classes. <coughs> In the late 19th century, saw the birth of the em emigrant car and third-class passenger accommodant. With all this in mind, the combination car might have been a re refuge for some and a rest restraint cell for others depending on the pers perspective perspective of the individual traveler <clears throat> then Oahu railway and land number 36 was donated to travel town in Los Angeles California in 1953 by the Oahu railway and land company Oahu Railway and Land 
number one was built by the Oahu Railway in land shops in Hawaii. Like about the 1900s, Oahu Railway in land number one is a wooden car that is a fine example of the simple but handsome passenger cars design of the late 19th century. It is completely planned in a mahogany and originally had on entre ornate orn, ornate detail work painted on the ceiling the original seats were probably plain wooden benches and since the this car was principally for carrying passengers and short trips between towns when operating in Hawaii the exterior was also decorated with the detailed scroll painting both the Oahu cars that are furnished with an early design railroad car water closet a tiny space literally the size of a small closet was walled off and protected with a door inside the closet a 15 inch hole was cut into in the flat boards over the hole a funnel shaped metal tube with the a 10 inch op opening at the top was placed with a round seat on it also met of metal the toilet could be used when the train was in motion since the refuse fell directly on the train tracks over the last century passenger car restrooms have improved improved considerably on a modern Amtrak train they are similar to an airplane lavatory with con containment tanks in many US states however even today passengers are adominished not with to use their restrooms while the train is in the station because in some areas refuse is still released directly into the rails. The Oahu Railway and land, then Oahu Railway and land number one was then retired and then donated to Travel Town by the Oahu Railway and Land Company in 1953. Stockton Terminal in East Turn 1 <clears throat> was built by Lancaster Locomotive Works in Lancaster, Pennsylvania in 1864 and is the 12th steam locomotive built by that factory and is a 440 American type steam locomotive. Stockton Terminal in East Turn 1 was built for the Western Pacific by E.S. Norris in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This first Western Pacific fur purchased 10 locomotives for its railroad construction lettered from A to J. Stockton Terminal Eastern 1 was lettered G and nicknamed Mariposa by by 1867 the Western Pacific had run out of money which halted construction until the railroad was absorbed. <coughs> the Central Pacific by the Central Pacific. The Mar Mariposa became the second Central Pacific 31 in 1869, replacing the first Central Pacific 31, which had blown up in Nevada earlier that year. <clears throat> After 40 years of service on the Central Pacific, under various numbers, including number as Southern Pacific 1193, the ex-Mariposa was sold to the new and flooding Stockton Terminal in Eastern in 1914. <clears throat> Stockton Terminal in Eastern service began on September 5, 2010. Stockton Terminal in Eastern 1 ran Continuously until retained then in 1953, Stockton Terminal and Eastern 1 was donated to Traveltown by the Stockton Terminal and Eastern Railroad. And today, 
the Stockton Terminal and Eastern One can be found at the Travel Town Museum in Los Angeles, California, and is the oldest steam locomotive at Travel Town. Pacific Electric 1544 was built by Northern Side, North Side Railroad in 1902 and is an electric kind of locomotive. Incorporated in late 1871, the narrow gauge Pacific Coast Railroad provided transportation between Marin County and San Francisco Ferry Landing. The property yacht attracted the interest of investigators, investors, I mean, of the Pacific Gas and Electric Company, who considered an electrified northern North Pacific coast an ideal cus, con, custom, customer for the their electric power. They purchased the road and re re reorganized it as the North, Side, North Shore Railroad. In 1902, this one of a kind electric locomotive called the Electra was built that very, that very year and <clears throat> a progressive step Toward an electrified standard gauge railroad, Electra. Electra was built in North North Side Railroad Tib Tib Tiburon shops on the north side of the San Francisco Bay. Its unique slopes and were fabricated from steam locomotive tenders wedged on either side of the cab and filled with water on one end and sand for blast ballast on the other. It was not a complete success for the North Shore Railroad for that time. It drew such large amounts of electricity that other electric cars along the line would slow to crawl and for this reason was operated by only during the early hours of the morning. <clears throat> In 1906, the Electra was shipped across the bay to help San Franciscans clear rubble after the earthquake. <clears throat> and later, the Central Pacific purchased it and renumbered it as Central Pacific 201 but may have merrily stored it until 1917 when the locomotive was purchased by Pacific Electric. Pacific Electric put the Electra to work at various construction projects and switching duties in Los Angeles until the, its retirement. In 1925, the Electra uh, laid labored on the construction of the subway system in Los Angeles, specifically the subway tunnel which ran underground from Glendale and Beverly Boulevard to Fifth and Hill Street, which is stripped of all its equipment, but is still in existence today. The Electra performed its last duty as switch engine at Pacific Electric's vast Torrance repair shop south of Los Angeles until its retirement in 1952. Then in 1953, Pacific Electric 1544 was donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California by Pacific Electric and can be seen on display at the museum where it is, is today. Union Pacific 2117 was built in 1881, before the turn of the century. Some of the most important people working on a train 
stationed in the caboose were the brakemen until the invention and widespread application of George Westinghouse's air brake in the later 19th century, each passenger or freight car had, had its own brake, <coughs> which had to be set individually on each car, I means by turning a large wheel to stop the train in an emergency. The engineer would ram his locomotive in reverse while the two other two or three brakemen on the train scrambled across the car roof from a from car to car, hand setting the brakes. The in inability to make a rapid stop led to many accidents. Every second delay could mean the difference between stopping the train in time or suffering an accident or derailment. There were there was many crew there was always a crew member on watching in the caboose looking out of the cupola for any danger that might lie ahead <coughs> of the train. The development of the air brakes which allowed the engineer to stop every car simu sim simu ten simu ten flee. Simultaneously, pro profoundly affected railroad safety. Also, Union Pacific 2117 was then retired, then donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California, by the Union Pacific Railroad in 1952. <laughs> Southern Pacific 30,036 was built somewhere in the 1930s during the boom years when a railroad came into a region. Its availability devastated and eventually bankrupt most of the wagon and ferry boat businesses that had previously carried goods persons in, and persons in that area in the 1920s. Railroads themselves began to lose business to new competitors, trucks for freight, cars and buses for people, asphalt and concrete replaced steel rail, especially what had been short branch lines between small towns, trucks, automobiles, and business buses were cheaper for companies to operate and offered more convenience to their customers. Long hauls of freight became the most and nearly only profitable market for the railroad. The, this steel framed wood side boxcar and anti anti dent ancient of the modern all steel boxcar could carry anything from bags of grain to barrels of gunpowder to bolts of fabric. Other types of freight cars include refrigerator cars, stick cars, automobile carriers, flat cars, and piggyback flat cars, piggy, which carry truck trailers. Also in 1955, Southern Pacific <coughs> 30,000 36 was donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California by the Southern Pacific Railroad and can be seen on display. Western Pacific 26 was built by Alco in Schenectady, New York in 1909 and is the 46,456 steam locomotive built by that factory and is a 280 consolidation type steam locomotive. Arthur W. Caddy was a 
surveyor who settled in Quincy, California in the 1860s to locate a wagon road down along the North, North Fork of the Feather River. While doing so, he became interested with the possibilities of railroading through the same route as Route Snow with a scarce and the grades were mag manageable. Katie, Katie dedicated his life to this project, but in 1860 he could not complete for funds with the other transcontinental railroads, the Central Pacific. In the 1890s, the proposed route caught the interest of Jay Good, owner of the Denver and Rio Grande, but the Union Pacific subsequently talked him out of extending his line when the ownership of the UP changed his changed hands. However, and Denver and Rio Grande was cut off from their Utah access. Jay Good's son George Dedic decided to build his own transcontinental line. Construction began in 1903 on the Western Pacific Railroad. Its $50 million bond issue was grant guaranteed by Good's Denver and Rio Grande <coughs> on the stipulation that grades would not exceed 1%, non curve 10 degrees, and amazing feet for, for a railroad that chain, clam, clambered more than 5,200 feet over the Sierras. <coughs> Also, Western Pacific 26 was used on the Western Pacific Railroad, as I, like I believe, a freight or passenger engine or both. Western Pacific 26 was already on the line working in Utah and Nevada when the road crews working eastward met those coming on west on November 1st, 1909. Contracts were already signed with the Santa Fe Railway, the Pacific Steamship Company, and a Japanese navigation company to provide connections to the rest of the world. Passenger service was inaugurated one year later, and Ketty Tears in his eyes was on hand to see his 50-year dream come true. Western Pacific 26 was then retired and then was donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California in 1954 by the Western Pacific Railroad. Also, Western Pacific 26 is one of five surviving Western Pacific steam locomotives left in the world today and is the only surviving Western Pacific 280 and can be found here at Travel Town in Los Angeles, California and displayed. You can also check out the cabin of the locomotive and even sit where the engineer and fireman used to sit. Sharpen Fellows Railroad Contractor 7 was built by Dixon Manufacturing in 1902 and is the 26th 2,264th steam locomotive built by that factory and is a <clears throat> 262 Prairie type steam locomotive. Sharpen Fellows Railroad Contractor 7 was originally built about 1902 with a 260 mogul wheel arrangement for the Minnesota Land and Construction Company. In 1909 it was sold to CA Sharp Con Construction Company, who added a two-wheel trailing truck under the engine cab and then used the locomotive in the building of the 
Santa Fe Railway System through Kansas, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, and California. During the First World War, Sharp and Fellows Railroad Contractor 7 served as at Camp Kearney, San Diego, and served during World War II at an assortment of ordnance depots, including defense ordnance at Fort Willet, Win, Wingate, New Mexico, at a Navajo ordnance plant at Flagstaff, Arizona. Also, Sharp and Fellow Railroad Contractor 7 was retired, then donated to Travel Town in 1954 by Sharp and Fellows. Sharp and Fellows Railroad Contractors Company and can be seen on display in the museum. Western Pacific 754 was built by the Haskell and Barker Com Car Company in Michigan City, Indiana in 1910. Also, Western Pacific 754 was used on the Western Pacific Railroad behind freight trains mostly. On passenger trains, the porters, bartenders, cooks, waiters, stewards, and other car crew members often shared tiny compartments in the end of the passenger cars as they traveled on long runs on freight trains. Crew members con congregated in the caboose when not working on the train. An early wooden caboose like the one before you would not be heated by wood or coal stove and would offer the only heat and a crew member would not find on freight train ex except in the locomotive cab itself. On a cold winter's night, <coughs> brakemen could not be quite reluctant relu relu to leave the warmth of the caboose to run out on a and apply the hand brakes or inspect the train during a stop at a station, the caboose was headquartered for the conductor. As Bossa on the rails, the conductor supervised all the train crew, including the engineer. The conductor, furthermore, gave work assignments on the train <coughs> and could not give the could not order the engineer to speed up or slow down, make make an unscheduled stop or any other com command. He was therefore responsible for everything that happened on a train, good or bad. The caboose, his center of operation on freight trains, was usually furnished with a table or desk, a bunk, restroom, sink, and stove for heat, tools for use on the train were stored in the caboose, his cupboard, cupboards and boxes slung on the outside of the caboose between the wheels. Lanterns hanging from the rear of the caboose served as warnings to other trains approaching from behind. Much of the same way as an automobile's taillight to do, taillight do today. Also, Western Pacific 754 was retired, then donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California, 1956, by the Western Pacific Railroad and can be found on display at the museum today. Los Angeles Metropolitan Transit Authority 1543 was built by American Car and Foundry in St. Charles, Missouri in 1911. Los Angeles Metropo 
Politician Transit Authority, 1543, was originally trailer 30, 436. Rebuilt in 1938 is a passenger car, 379. When the electric service ended on that line in 1941, the cars were saved from scrapping by United States Maritime Commission, the blimp, as it was nicknamed operated during the Second World War as one of the Cal ship specials hauling welders and yard workers during the California Shipbuilding Corporation yard on Terminal Island, Long Beach at the end of World War in 1945. Pacific Electric brought the former Southern Pacific Motor Cars. Metropolitan Coach Lines purchased the Pacific Electric Passenger Lines in 1953. The Los Angeles Metropolitan Transit Authority took over ML Metropol MLC in 1958. This former big red car was as the Pacific Electric Interurbans were known as were known was the only motor car painted Los Angeles Metro Politician Transit Authority green and is the last remaining document of the Metro Politician Transit Authority short region. Also, Los Angeles Metro Politician Transit Authority 1543 came to be part of the Travel Town Museum in Los Angeles, California and purchased from the scrapyard in 1961. Camino Placerville in Lake Tahoe No. 2 was built by Lima Locomotive Works in Lima, Ohio in 1922 and is the 3172nd steam locomotive built by that factory and is a three truck shay and is a 70-3 class steam locomotive. Camino Placerville in Lake Tahoe 2 was used on logging railroads and hauled lumber for the Camino Placerville and Lake Tahoe Railroad. Camino Placerville and Lake Tahoe too was originally Little River Redwood Company Railroad 4 and used at, at a lumber con concern based, based in Cronell, California. <clears throat> In 1935, the locomotive was sold to the Camino Placerville and Lake Tahoe Railroad and renumbered as Camino Placerville and Lake Tahoe II. Camino Placerville and Lake Tahoe II was primarily a lumber hauling line carrying milled lumber, milled timber, I mean, from the company's plant, planting mill and Camino in the Sierra Nevada mountains east of Sacramento, California to connection to a connection with the Placerville branch of the Southern Pacific at Placerville, California. Then in 1955, Camino Placerville in Lake Tahoe 2 was donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California by the Michigan California Lumber Company and can be found on display in the museum today. Los Angeles Harbor District 31 was built by Davenport Locomotive Works in Davenport, Iowa in 1921 is, and is the 1868 steam locomotive built by that factory and is an 040T four-wheeler type switcher <clears throat> steam locomotive. Los Angeles Harbor District 31 is a saddle tank engine that was built for the city of Los Angeles 
and put to work on Cal- Catal- Catalina Island hauling rock from quarry to shore where it would be shipped over to the mainland for construction of the Los Angeles Harbor and breakwater. This locomotive also served on the mainland hauling construct construction supplies to various sites within the harbor with Los Angeles Harbor District 32. Los Angeles Harbor District 31 was destined for the scrapyard when Travel Town's founder, Charlie Atkins, discovered them and suggested they be donated for display at the at Travel Town in 1952 and where it is today and they can be found on display at the museum. Los Angeles Harbor District 32 was built by Rogers Locomotive and Machine Works in Patterson, New Jersey in 1913 and is the 53,115th steam locomotive built by that factory and is an 040 tank four-wheeler switcher type steam locomotive. Los Angeles Harbor District 32 was, is a saddle tank engine that was built for the city of Los Angeles and put to work on the Catalina Island hauling rock from quarry to shore where it would be shipped over to the mainland for construction <clears throat> of Los Angeles Harbor and breakwater. This locomotive also served on the mainland hauling construction supplies to various sites within the harbor with Los Angeles Harbor District 31. <clears throat> Los Angeles Harbor District 32 was destined for the scrapyard when Travel Town's founder Charlie Atkins discovered them and suggested they be donated for display travel town in 1952 where it is today. Also, Los Angeles Harbor District can also be found at travel town today. Pickering Lumber Company 2 was built by Heisler Locomotive Works in Erie, Pennsylvania in 1918 and is the 1396 steam locomotive built by that factory and is a three-truck Heisler steam locomotive and is a 75-ton class steam locomotive. Pickering Lumber Company 2 was originally used for the Hetchy Hetch, Hetch Hetchy Railroad and was used to transport construction materials for a dam that would supply water via an adequate to San Francisco. It may have worked tender to tender on the Hetchy, Hetch Hetchy with the Santa Maria Valley 1000, which is also on display at the museum. Also, Pickering Lumber Company was used for hauling logs, timber, and forests for the Pickering Lumber Company. Then Pickering Lumber Company 2 was retired and then was donated to Travel Town in 1957 by the Pickering Lumber Company and can be seen on display. Southern Pacific 3025 was built by Alco in Schenectady, New York in 1904 and is the 30,005th steam locomotive built by that factory and is an A3 class steam locomotive and is a 442 Atlantic type steam locomotive. Southern Pacific 3025 was built to run at high speed. Southern Pacific 3025 was like a fast passenger locomotive and has gone like 100 miles per hour and Southern Pacific 3025 may have occasionally pulled name trains. A, a 
along the California coast, <clears throat> the Daylight or its sister trains, the Starlight, and most definitely the Lark, the Coast Route, Southern Pacific, Standard Gauge Road from San Francisco to L.A., Los Angeles, hugging California's rugged coastline, swinging above the surf along the edges of steep cliffs, certainly was one of the most scenically spectacular routes by which to travel in California throughout the 20th century. The coast route was traveled by kings, presidents, millionaires, and movie stars, and included such dignities as President Theodore Roosevelt and Woodrow Wilson and Queen Marie Romania. Also, Southern Pacific 3025 was nearly scrapped and then escaped the torch <clears throat> and then was donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California in 1952 by Southern Pacific and is the first steam engine to be on display in Travel Town. Also, 3025 is the only surviving Southern Pacific 442. Also, you can go inside the cab, check out the cab of the locomotive, and even sit where the engineer and fireman once sat. Pennsylvania Railroad 4418 was built by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1925. Pennsylvania Railroad 4418 was, is a dining car that was used on the Pennsylvania Railroad during... Dining cars were made... were... by themselves a liability to the railroad they were the heaviest and most expensive passenger cars to maintain the expected standards of quality and service menu and comfort. The railroads often incurred applying losses. First class passengers expected fine dining cars and the railroads were obligated to provide them with the finest of uh, service before dining cars, passengers on long trips either brought them along the, their own food and dined at the train station restaurants. The food at the stops was really a, of good quality of or variety of or much variety and passengers sometimes had only minutes in which to eat in the 1870s. Dining cars were developed first for wealthy passengers. The Chicago and Al Alton Railroad was the first to the first to adopt <clears throat> the dining cars for regular passenger service in order to complete other Chicago railroads. Did likewise eventually dining cars became a competitive necessary necessity on all railroads, no matter how an expense was incurred through the, their manufacturer and opened the Pullman Car Company, built the first dining car named it, naming it the. Del, Delmonico, Delmonico after the world famous restaurant in New York City, the Delmonico featuring two dining rooms with a kitchen between the two rooms by the early 1800s, the design configuration of the <coughs> dining car had changed putting the kitchen at one end of the car and 
the dining room seating 36 people at the other end a dining car required a staff of at least seven and sometimes as many as 16 cooks bus boys and waiters tables were set with fine line linen silver and china all made especially for a railroad and embla emblazoned with its logo the cars themselves were generally captured occasionally furnished with fine dra draperies and light fixtures menus might offer as many as 80 different dishes featuring fresh meat fish poultry baked goods fruit fruits and vegetables dining cars eventually gave way almost together to e economical buffet and snack cars which were much less ordin entree and had limited menus and services this specific diner was built for, by the Pennsylvania Railroad for the crack fast train the Broadway Limited and later in its career ran on the Spirit of St. Louis also Pennsylvania Railroad 4418 was then retired then donated to travel town by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1958 Southern Pacific 1273 was built by Southern Pacific Sacramento Shops in Sacramento, California in 1921 and is the 1861 steam locomotive built by that factory and is an S12 class steam locomotive and is an 060 six wheeler type steam locomotive. Southern Pacific 1273 was used primarily as a switch engine in the yards. Southern Pacific 1273 never less, never the last log fifteen hundred thousand miles during its thirty five years of service. Southern Pacific 1273 was, I believe, used to haul freight trains on the Southern Pacific Railroad a lot and also was used as a shunter locomotive in the yard. Southern Pacific 1273 was then retired and then donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California by the Southern Pacific Railroad in 1957. Also, Southern Pacific 1273 is one of 15 surviving Southern Pacific 060s in the world today, and this one can be found here at the Travel Town Museum in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, where it is today. Southern Pacific 12 was built by Carter Bros Brothers Car Company in 1880, and is a pre-20th century wooden post car. Southern Pacific 12 was put in a to a variety of uses by its owners, caboose, baggage car, railway post, postal car, and mostly notability, a baggage mail combination. Mail transportation by rail had ex existed as long as the railroads themselves. In Britain, mail was already be being sorted within rail cars in the late 1830s. This practice was Im imitated on a few American railroads but came into widespread use only after the Civil War. Perhaps no more efficient mail system could have existed than that of the railway postal system, both local and long distance. 
trains included a car equipment with pigeon holes, sorting bags and tables, cancellation stamps, and on and one or more frenzies, clerks trying to sort a bag of mail picked up at one station before arriving at the next station. Each would be only 10 or 20 minutes down the road. Early in their history, these railway post office cars shared space with express baggage service. Later, as the system grew, more elaborate, elaborate and tire 60 or 80 feet of space, railway post foot, railway entire 60 or 80 foot railway post office cars were specially built for that purpose and resembled small versions of a post office <clears throat> as with other aspects of railroading. Railway post office cars and their clerks have a lower all, all their own. The metal arms which swung out of from the side of the car to catch the hanging mail bag which, when the train was not scheduled to stop at a station or our collector's items as are many there as are any existing cancellation stamps. Clerks carried guns for protection against outlaws wanting to steal the mail. In the first decades, clerks worked on cars furbished, furnished either with fire-causing wood stoves or without any heat at all. Doors could be not be left open for security reasons, so the cars were barely ventilated in the summer heat. If they had toilet facilities at all, they were crude and really pri private. Sometimes a lone clerk, sometimes a handful of men tripping over and stepping on each other, slaves at sorting the and canceling mail, catching a new bag every 20 minutes, and simulate 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 kicking off bag sorted for death stop by the 1960s railway men like railway passenger service and some railway freight service was falling in favor of air transport of mail. The last RPO ran between Washington, D.C. and New York in June 19, in June 30, 1977. The Southern, then Southern Pacific 12 was retired and then donated to Traveltown in 1960 by the Southern Pacific Railroad and can be found on display at the museum. Southern Pacific 163 was like probably built by the Virginian Truckee Shops in Virginia City, Nevada in 1890. At one time, Southern Pacific owned several hundred miles of narrow gauge railroad. One such line was Carson and Colorado Railroad, incorporated in 1880. Southern Pacific acquired Carson and Colorado's rolling stock in 1900 and in 1905. The railroad was reorganized re 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 under the name of the Nevada and California Railway Company. Its lines extended from a network of branches, branch roads in western Nevada across the state line into California near Bishop, 
down the through the Owens Valley toward Mohave. Some of the line was converted to standard gauge as southern, the Southern Pacific viewed the road as possible shortcut from Los Angeles to the original Transcontinental Railroad, but much of the long haul from Mina to Keeler remain, remain narrow gauge. The route enjoyed its last run in April 1960. This stock car was built for the Carson in Colorado and was inherited by the Southern Pacific in 1900 with the rest of the Carson in Colorado's railroad, Colorado's rolling stock cars. Stock cars were simply rail car designs for the transportation of livestock and equipped with slated side sides and doors like other items of personality, property, animals needed to be transported along the long distance of their own owners traveled. Cattle went more quickly by rail to the slaughterhouse than by log, long cow poking trail. Horses, chickens, mules, and sheep had to be transported by to the rapidly emerging farms in the west. Livestock still is still transported by rail today and is in the modern metals the descent of cars like Southern Pacific 163. Then Southern Pacific 163 was retired later, was retired, then donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California, 1960 by the Southern Pacific. Southern Pacific One was built in the 1890 in 1890 in the 1870s and 1880s when the narrow gauge railroads had their flash of popularity. The specially sized locomotives were manufactured by the same companies which were building standard gauge low engines. However, few cars building companies were established especially to build freight and passenger cars for the new narrow gauge railroads. One such company was Carter Brothers in Newark, California. On the east side of the San Francisco Bay, although not a major manufacturer company compared to the established standard gauge passenger car builders, Carter Brothers, nonetheless, was a, the principal builder of the narrow gauge in the western United States and additionally supplied rolling stock to Mexico and Central America. At the same time as Carter Brothers was manufacturing <coughs> passenger cars, there were several narrow gauge railroads that built their own cars by imitating the Carter Brothers design. <clears throat> this specific car ran on slim rails through the desert sands of California and Nevada between Mina and Keeler during Nego Neg ne ne Negation. Negation, negotiation, negotiation, negotiations for the initial right of way of the Carson and Colorado Railroad. A stretch of line was to cross the Shurs Indian Reservation, and in an agreement to the railroad supplied transportation for the Shurs residents for free. Like many of the benefits awarded members of the reservation, this complimentary transportation was furnished with not within the comforts of the train chair car, but rather a 
stop atop the co stop the coach or boxcar roof atop the coach or boxcar roof certainly not accommodation of the revenue customer Later, the Southern Pacific Railroad purchased Carson in Colorado, receiving their entire inventory of rolling stock when the present gauge became accepted as standard gauge. The broad gauge lines built within five and six feet gauges reduced with the width of their tracks, making it possible for the cars and engines of any railroad to run on tracks of all rail other railroads. A uniform railroad gauge made it possible for a person to travel over several railroads without changing cars. When the gauges were different, freight or passenger had to be transferred from one car to another at every point where there was a change of gauge a uniform guy saved gauge saved the railroads at railroads time and expense also southern pacific one was then retired and then donated to travel town i and i believe it was donated by the southern pacific Rail. about that back in 
And I first heard that song back in my general music class. Here's a Hollywood trophy and some pictures. Here's an old poster. Lady Garland, the Harvey Girl. What? Snake DVD, snake disc. In this case. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 3355 was built by the Pullman Car Company in 1928. From the beginning of the American Railroad industry in the 1830s and continuing to into the first decade of the 20th century, passenger cars were constructed of wood. Builders had refined the craft of building such cars until their interiors and exteriors were objects objects of great pride and beauty, but wooden car bodies would easily crush into splinter in an accident or derailment, and the coal or wood stove used for heat quick could quickly turn a wrecked wooden car into a bonfire. Concerns for safety led to demands for metal cars. Near the end of the 19th century, the railroads began building steel-framed freight cars, which would carry more weight and thus earn more revenue. Those same railroads saw little economy in building steel or framed passenger cars. Such modification would result into heavier cars and therefore more work for the locomotive in the first years of the 20th century, railroad companies finally gave into the demands of safety. Steel had also become cheaper. Major railroads and car, car builders such as Pullman assigned engineers to designers to task of fabrication, a workable safe steel passenger car for the next 20th, 20 years. The railroad industry settled on a design called the heavyweight. Typically, passenger cars in this period weighed about 80 tons and were built as a sub substantial underframe of steel girders, which accounted for the 20% for about 20% of their weight. Walls were sandwich, were a sandwich of sheet metal with heavy il insulation filling because their great gaps for windows offered little structural support. Steel beams were used. The floors were generally in a were generally a thin layer of concrete spread on a wooden subfloor built over the steel girders. Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 3355 is a heavyweight built in 1928 as a 70-foot long chair car converted into a snack car in 1948 until retirement transported passengers between Los Angeles and San Diego. Then Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe 3355 was retired and then donated to Travel Town in 1956 by the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad. Southern Pacific 2513 was built by Pullman in 1910. Despite the widespread use of steel passenger cars after the turn of the century, the basic shape of the car varied little from the standard wooden designs in the 1800s, which always featured the clerestory clear roof. The clerestory is the broad hump along the center of the roof. Per Per portrait, the transom windows, which helped ventilate the car's interior. Long after the cars were sealed, after heating, air, and conditioning, 
Most passenger cars were still manufactured with the old-fashioned clerestory roof, even though it is no longer served any per partic practical purpose in climate control. Southern Pacific 2513 is one of the first all-sealed chair cars which abandoned the clerestory design which designed cars with this effective barrel valve shape were called Harriman cars, named after the railroad mogul. And <clears throat> once owner of the Southern Pacific Railroad, Edward Harriman, the spacious rounded ceiling was a re refreshing expectation to clear story design. The interior of the steel cars, however, did differ from their wooden predecessors in one way. They were more astray. The inside walls of the car were sheets of steel riveted into steel frames and were usually painted with smooth layer of plain pale green. The luxury of furnished wood walls and fine appointments that went with them were omitted um, 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 almost all as through though to make passengers suffer from for presumed safety of steel off car offered a chair car such as this one was simply a car furnished with a with thirty or forty benches for day long trips only very late. In the 1920s, did some railroad reintroduce elegant touches into passenger cars. Then in 1955, Southern Pacific 2513 was donated to Travel Town in Los Angeles, California by the Southern Pacific Rail. Traveltown Railroad 91. Traveltown Railroad 91 was built by Jerry Bowden in 1993. Also, the Traveltown Railroad 91 is a brother of the Stanley Diamond locomotive. Also, Traveltown Railroad 91 is a 260 Mogul type steam locomotive. Traveltown Railroad 91 and its brother unit the Stanley Diamond Griffith Park in Southern 92 <clears throat> were built in Oregon in 1993 to design by the chief engineer Gene Gus Gustavson. They are modeled after the narrow gauge locomotives that worked the timber and mining areas of the West during the early part of the century. Traveltown Railroad 91 is name, also named Courage. Also, Traveltown Railroad 91's unit has identical power to the Colonial Griffith, which is Griffith Park in Southern Railroad 1. Also, sometimes Traveltown Railroad 91 is seen hauling the train around the running, hauling the train and running on the miniature tracks at at Travel Town in Los Angeles, California. Well, I hope you all enjoyed learning about trains today. Not the last for you guys, thank you. Also, I hope to see you all again in the next segment.